Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's game, I wanted to ask a question. Do you have extra cards lying around that you don't use? Want to buy or trade for some extra cards but don't know how to maximize the value? Then you should try out today's sponsor, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. Don't waste hours trying to find the best buy list price for your cards online. Simply send them to Card Conduit and let them take care of the rest. I have used Card Conduit multiple times already. I always use them to get the best value for my extra cards. I get fair prices for my cards and they save me tons of time. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them your unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best price for your cards. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value. They will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. They give you the best price for your cards. They work with competitive buy listing partners, including ones not open to the public. Users get an average of 19% more for their collection than they would from any major retail buy list, even with Card Conduit's fees. Card Conduit also optimizes buy listing for card condition as well. Since vendors have different penalties for wear and tear, Card Conduit will find the best buy list priced against the specific condition of the card. So give Card Conduit a try today. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Nick, piloting Jetmir, Nexus of Rebels. This is an aggro stack stack that uses its commander to pump its creatures and win through combat. Nick's opening hand contains a Loyal Apprentice, Dryad Militant, Arbor Elf, Sardian Avenger, Savannah, Mana Confluence, and a Scalding Tarn. Next, we have Peter, piloting Kirik, son of Yogmoth. This deck uses its commander to cheat mana costs and tries to assemble its win as quickly as possible. Peter's opening hand contains a Grim Monolith, Grim Tutor, Vampiric Tutor, two Swamps, and his Lona Mulligans are Lion's Eye Diamond and a Chain of Smog. After that, we have Mike, piloting Winota, joiner of forces. This is a stack deck looking to cheat hate bears onto the battlefield with its commander's ability and win through combat. Mike's opening hand contains a Mana Crypt, Ether Sworn Cannonist, Glow Rider, Shatter Skull Smashing, Phoenix Chick, Professional Facebreaker, and a Mountain. Finally, we have a Shawnee, piloting Corvold, Fake Hurst King. This deck, known as Treasure Storm, seeks to resolve a Dockside Extortionist, draw cards with Corvold, and dig for the win. Ashani's opening hand contains a Dockside Extortionist, Reign of Filth, Blood Crypt, Marsh Flats, Nurturing Peatland, Ancient Tomb, and his London Mulligan is an Arid Mesa. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified of when we publish more content. Also, be sure to follow us on social media. You can find us everywhere you choose to doom scroll. Without further ado, let's kick off this gaggle of greatly gregarious gatherers. Nick wins the Ugly Sweater Contest and gets to start us off. Nick draws a card for turn and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts an Arbor Elf and passes the turn. Peter draws, plays a Swamp, and gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Mountain. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Professional Facebreaker. Mike ends his turn. Ashani draws and plays a Nurturing Peatland. He taps it to cast Elvish Mystic. He passes. At the end of Ashani's turn, Peter casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. The turn moves to Nick. Nick draws and plays a Savannah. He casts Sardian Avenger. He casts Dryad Militant. Nick ships the turn to Peter. Peter draws and plays a Swamp. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Grim Monolith. Peter pays six life to help cast his commander, Kirik, son of Yogmoth. He pays four life and casts a Grim Tutor. Kirik triggers and gets a 1-1 counter, and then Peter fetches up a card into his hand, losing three life. Then Grim Tutor's exiled through Dryad Militant. Peter pays 6 life and casts Necropotence. Kirik triggers and gets another counter. It resolves and he activates Necropotence 7 times, paying 7 life and exiling 7 cards. He moves to his end step and puts the Necro cards into his hand. Peter passes, discarding to hand size, exiling the discarded cards. During his upkeep, Mike wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts Phoenix Chick. He moves to combat, attacking Peter with Facebreaker and Ashani with Phoenix Chick. They both take it, Facebreaker triggers, and Mike creates 2 treasures. In a second main phase, Mike cracks a treasure and casts Other Sworn Cannonist. Sardian Avenger triggers and Mike takes the damage. He plays Shatter Skull, the Hammer Pass, into play tapped, and passes the turn. Ashani draws and plays a Blood Crypt into play untapped, paying 2 life. He casts a Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Ashani creates 6 treasures. He ends his turn. Nick draws and plays a Horizon Canopy. He taps it to help cast Grand Abolisher. Nick moves to combat and attacks Peter with 12 with his first striking, trampling, Sardian Avenger. Peter is forced to block with Kirik and takes the rest. All through, Nick passes the turn to Peter. 
Turn his upkeep, Peter's Mana Crypt triggers. With his life on the line, he rolls and wins. He skips his draw step due to Necropotence. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He plays a Swamp. He casts Shieldred the Apocalypse. He casts Sensei's Divining Top. Peter ships the turn to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike wins his Mana Crypt roll. During his draw step, he loses two life through Shieldred. He plays a Mana Confluence for turn. He taps it to help cast his commander, Winota, joiner of forces. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Facebreaker and Ashani with Phoenix Chick. Winota triggers and in response, Peter saves himself from death by activating top, drawing a card and putting top on top, gaining two life through Shieldred. Then Mike looks at the top six and puts a Zealous Conscripts onto the battlefield tapped in attacking Ashani. Zealous Conscripts triggers and Mike gains control of Necropotence. Ashani blocks Conscripts with Dockside and then they both take the rest. Facebreaker triggers and Mike creates two treasures. In his second main phase, he activates Necropotence seven times, paying seven life, exiling seven cards. He moves to his end step and puts the Necro cards into his hand. He passes, Necropotence goes back under Peter's control, and then he discards the hand size. Ashani draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He cracks six treasures, taking six damage from Sardian Avenger, and then casts Calling Ritual. In response, Nick activates Arbor Elf, untapping Savannah. In response, Peter cracks Jeweled Lotus and takes a damage from Sardian Avenger. Mike activates Facebreaker, sacrificing a treasure, exiling a Marius Call off of the top of his library, taking a damage from the Avenger. Mike activates Facebreaker again, exiling Loyal Apprentice. Avenger triggers and Mike takes another damage. Mike cracks a treasure and adds a white. Avenger triggers and he takes another damage. With no other responses, Ashani's Culling Ritual resolves, destroying all non-land permanents two or less, and he has four green and seven black. Ashani casts Ad Nauseam. With no responses, it resolves. Ashani reveals a Grinding Station, Autumn's Veil, vale, Grim Monolith, Stomping Ground, Verdant Catacombs, Gamble, Imperial Seal, Overgrown Tomb, City of Brass, Elvish Spirit Guide, Badlands, Mayhem Devil, Arid Mesa, Calling the Weak, Demonic Tutor, Squandered Resources, and a Mana Vault, deciding to stop there. Ashani casts a Mana Vault. He casts a Demonic Tutor, fetching up a card into his hand. He casts Underworld Breach. He casts Grinding Station. Since Grinding Station sees itself entering, its second ability triggers. So in response, Ashani sacrifices his Mana Vault and mills three cards. Then Grinding Station untaps. He casts Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards Squandered Resources. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. It enters and Grinding Station triggers. In response, he activates Station, sacrificing his LED and milling three. Ashani escapes LED. He exiles Elvish Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a green. He cracks LED, discards his hand, and adds three red. He escapes LED again. Ashani presents a loop of activating Grinding Station, sacrificing LED, milling three cards, then escaping LED to untap Grinding Station. He does this until he mills a Twin Flame. He escapes Ignoble Hierarch. He escapes Twin Flame targeting the Hierarch. He holds priority and escapes Dualcaster Mage. Dualcaster enters and triggers targeting Twin Flame. In response, Nick attempts to stop the inevitability by casting Path to Exile targeting Dualcaster Mage. In response, Ashani escapes deflecting SWAT. SWAT resolves, redirecting Path of Exile to Ignoble Hierarch. Hierarch is exiled and Ashani declines to search. With no other responses, Dualcaster creates a copy of Twin Flame. Twin Flame targets Dualcaster, creating another copy. Ashani presents a loop of creating infinite hasty Dualcasters through Twin Flame. He moves to combat and attacks each opponent, and Ashani wins the game. What a fun game, so let's go ahead and go again. In this game, Peter brings back Kyrick, son of Yogmoth, and his opening hand contains a Jet Medallion, Dark Ritual, Flesh Rither, Ancient Tomb, Swamp, and his London Mulligans are Defense Grid and Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Mike brings back Winota, joiner of forces, and his opening hand contains a Mana Vault, Ornithopter, Sanctum Prelate, Spectator Seating, Needle Verge Pathway, and his London Mulligans are Aganjo Seed of the Empire and Thalia's Lancers. Ashani brings back Corbold, Fake Cursed King, and his opening hand contains a Fire Covenant, Gamble, Badlands, Wooded Foothills, Blood Crypt, Gemstone Caverns, and his London Mulligan is a City of Traders. Nick brings back Jetmere, Nexus of Revels, and his opening hand contains a Slicer, Hired Muscle, Vren Wingmare, Hushbringer, Esper Sentinel, Iganjo, Seed of the Empire, Guidus Cradle, and his London Mulligan is a Takatli Honor Guard. And Peter gets to start us off. But Ashani has a pre-game action, putting Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Blood Crypt. Peter draws for turn and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to help cast Jet Medallion. He passes. Mike draws and plays a Spectator Seating. He casts a Man of All. He ends his turn. Ashani draws, plays a Wooded Foothills, and ships the turn to Nick. Nick draws and also plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Plateau onto the battlefield. He casts an Esper Sentinel. He passes the turn. At the end of Nick's turn, Ashani cracks his Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. The turn moves to Peter. Peter draws and plays a Swamp. He taps his Ancient Tomb and pays 6 life to help cast his commander, Kirik, son of Yogmoth. He pays 2 life to cast Dark Ritual. Esper triggers and Nick draws a card. Kirik triggers and gets a 1-1 counter. He then adds 3 black. 
Peter pays 4 life and casts Flesh Rither. Kirk triggers and gets another counter. He pays 2 life and casts Wishclaw Talisman. Kirk triggers and gets a counter. He pays 4 life to transfigure Flesh Rither, fetching up a Violent Tumor onto the battlefield. Violent Tumor triggers and Peter fetches up a Villas, Broker of Blood, into his graveyard. He activates Wishclaw Talisman, fetches up a card into his hand, and then gives Wishclaw to Nick. Peter casts Reanimate, targeting Villas. Kirk triggers and gets another counter. Reanimate resolves and Villas returns to the battlefield and he loses 8 life. Villas triggers and he draws 8 cards. Peter casts Mox Diamond, discarding Urza's Saga. He casts a Mana Vault. He pays 4 life and casts Dark Petition with Spell Mastery. Villas triggers and Peter draws 4. Kirk triggers and gets a counter. Dark Petition resolves, Peter fetches up a card into his hand and then adds 3 black. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Imp's Mischief. He casts Grey Merchant of Asphodel and Kirk gets a counter. It enters and each opponent loses 10 life and Peter gains 30. Peter pays 2 life and casts Blood Pet. Kirk triggers and gets a counter. Villas triggers and he draws 2 cards. He pays 4 life and casts Dothy Voidwalker. Kirk triggers, gets a counter, then Villas triggers and he draws 4. Peter pays 4 life to activate Villas targeting Esper Sentinel. He holds priority and does this again 3 more times. Villas triggers and Peter draws 16 cards. The abilities resolve and Nick's Esper Sentinel dies. Peter pays 2 life and casts Sacrifice, sacrificing Grey Merchant as an additional cost. Kirk triggers and gets a counter. Villas triggers and Peter draws 2 cards. It resolves and Peter adds 5 black. He pays 2 life to cast Dance of the Dead. Kirk triggers and gets a counter. Villas triggers and he draws 2. Dance resolves and Peter reanimates Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Merchant enters and each opponent loses 14 life and Peter gains 42. He casts a Demonic Tutor. Kirk triggers and gains a counter. And Peter fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Saw in Half, targeting Grey Merchant. Kirk triggers and gains another counter. Saw in Half resolves and Peter creates two copies of Grey Merchant. They both trigger, draining his opponents for 30 life, and Peter wins the game. Well, if only Mike and Ashani and Nick could have saw that coming. See what it did there? I'll show myself out. In this game, Mike brings back Winota, joiner of forces, and his opening hand contains a Goblin Rabble Master, Ornithopter, Path to Exile, Simeon Spirit Guide, City of Brass, Mana Confluence, and a Needle Verge Pathway. Ashani brings back Corvold, Vakers King, and his opening hand contains a Witchclaw Talisman, Calling the Weak, Ignoble Hierarch, Gemstone Caverns, Dualcaster Mage, Vernon Catacombs, and an Overgrown Tomb. Nick brings back Jetmir, Nexus of Revels, and his opening hand contains a Ragavan Nimble Pilferer, Deafening Silence, Windswept Teeth, Gaia's Cradle, Teolani's Summoner, and his London Mulligans are Champion of Lamholt and Winds of Abandon. Peter brings back Kyrick, Son of Yawgmoth, and his opening hand contains an Entomb, Soul Ring, Chainer Dementia Master, Final Parting, Reanimate, Deadly Rollick, and a Swamp. And Mike gets to start us off. But Ashani has a pregame action, putting Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Overgrown Tomb. Mike draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to help cast Signal Pest. He casts an Ornithopter. He passes the turn. Ashani draws and plays a Verdict Catacombs. He casts Ignoble Hierarch. He ends his turn. Nick draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Plateau onto the battlefield. He casts a Deafening Silence. He gives the turn to Peter. Peter draws and plays a Swamp. He casts a Soul Ring and passes. Mike draws and plays a Needle Verge Pathway. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Goblin Rabble Master. He moves to combat, Rabble Master triggers, and Mike creates a 1-1 Goblin with haste. He attacks Peter with the Goblin, Ornithopter, and Signal Pass. Signal Pest's Battle Cry triggers, buffing Mike's other creatures. Peter takes the damage, and in his second main phase, Mike casts Rograk, son of Rogar. Mike passes the turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Ashani cracks his Verdant Catacombs, pays a life, and fetches up a Blood Crypt onto the battlefield tapped. Ashani draws and plays a City of Traitors. He casts a Witchclaw Talisman. He activates Witchclaw Talisman, fetches up a card into his hand, and then gives the Witchclaw to Peter. He casts Dockside Extortionist. Dockside enters, and Ashani creates five treasures. He casts his commander, Corvold, Fake Cursed King. Corvold enters, and Ashani sacrifices Dockside. Corvold triggers, he gets a 1 1 counter, and Ashani draws a card. He ships the turn to Nick. Nick draws and plays a Brushland. He casts Ragaman, Nimble Pilferer. He taps his Brushland to help cast Weathered Wayfarer. Nick passes the turn. Peter draws and casts Reanimate, targeting Dockside in Ashani's graveyard. Dockside enters, and Peter loses 2 life. Dockside triggers, and Peter creates 3 treasures. He pays 6 life to help cast his commander, Kirik, son of Yogmoth. He gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a City of Brass. He moves to combat, Rabble Master triggers, and he creates a Goblin. In response, Peter pays 2 life to cast Cut Down, targeting Signal Pest. Kirk triggers and gets a 1 1 counter. Signal Pest dies, and Mike attacks Nick with his two Goblins. Nick takes it, and with nothing else, Mike passes the turn. During Nishani's upkeep, Peter casts Deadly Rollick for its alternate cost, targeting Corvold. Kirk triggers and gets a counter. In response, Ashani flashes in a Dualcaster Mage. Dualcaster enters and creates a copy of Deadly Rollick, targeting Kirk. Both relics resolve, and Kirik and Corvold are exiled. Ashani draws and casts Skirk Prospector. He ships the turn. Nick draws and plays a Gaia's Cradle. He taps his Brushland to help cast Ranger Captain of Eos. 
Ranger enters, and Nick fetches up a Birds of Paradise into his hand. He casts Birds of Paradise and moves to combat. He attacks Mike with Ragavan. Mike takes it, Ragavan triggers, Mike exiles Blade Historian, and Nick creates a treasure. Nick passes the turn to Peter. Peter draws and activates Wishclaw Talisman. He fetches up a card into his hand and gives the Wishclaw to Ashani. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. Peter pays 6 life and recasts his commander, Kirik, son of Yawgmoth. Finished up, he passes. At the end of Peter's turn, Mike taps the City of Brass to help cast Path to Exile, targeting his own Goblin token. Goblin is exiled, and Mike fetches up a Plains onto the battlefield. Everyone knowing that this is how White ramps, they take pity on Mike, and he moves to his turn. Mike draws and casts a Mana Crypt. He taps the City of Brass to help cast his commander, Winota, join her forces. Mike moves to combat, and in response, Nick activates Weathered Wayfarer, fetching up a Beseju who endures into his hand. Then Rabble Master triggers, creating another Goblin. Mike attacks Nick with the Goblin Rabble Master, Ornithopter, Rograk, and two Goblins. Rabble Master triggers, and Winota triggers five times. Mike looks at the top six and puts Glow Rider onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking Ashani. Mike looks at the next six and fails to find. He looks at the next six, putting Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking Ashani as well. He looks at the next six, putting Professional Facebreaker onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking Peter. He looks at the final six, putting Cathar Commander onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking Ashani. Then Rabble Master gets plus two plus L. Ashani blocks with Dualcaster Mage, and Nick blocks a Goblin with Ranger Captain, and then they take the rest. Facebreaker triggers, and Mike creates three treasures. In his second main phase, Mike activates Cathar Commando, sacrificing it, destroying Wishclaw Talisman. With nothing else, Mike ships the turn. Ashani draws, casts a Mana Crypt, and passes to Nick. Nick draws and taps his Brushland to help cast his commander, Jetmir, Nexus of Rebels. He casts Teolani Summoner. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Ragavan and Ashani with Ranger Captain. They both take it, Ragavan triggers, and Mike exiles Ranger Captain of Eos, and Nick creates a treasure. In a second main phase, he activates Weathered Wayfarer and fetches up a Taiga into his hand. Nick plays a Taiga and passes the turn to Peter. Peter draws and pays 4 life to cast Balthor the Defiled. Kirk triggers and gets a counter. He ends the turn. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and moves to combat. Rabble Master triggers, creating a Goblin. He attacks Nick with Glow Rider and Ashani with two Goblins, Facebreaker, Ornithopter, Rograk, Thalia, and Goblin Rabble Master. Rabble Master triggers and Winota triggers five times. Mike looks at the top six and puts Mog Catcher onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking Ashani. He looks at the next six and puts Zealous Conscripts onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking Peter. Conscripts triggers and Mike gains control of Jetmir. Mike looks at the next six and fails to find. He looks at another six and puts Sanctum Prelate onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking Ashani. As it enters, Mike names two. Mike looks at the top six one last time, putting Myrel, Shield of Argive, onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking Peter. Then Rabble Master gets plus two plus O. Oh. They all take it, and both Ashani and Peter die. Facebreaker triggers, creating six treasures. In his second main phase, Mike activates Facebreaker and exiles Ether Sworn Cannonist off of the top of his library. He activates Facebreaker again and exiles Combat Celebrant. He activates Facebreaker and exiles Giver of Runes. He does it one more time and exiles Flooded Strand. He plays a Flooded Strand from Exile. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Plains onto the battlefield. Mike casts Combat Celebrant from Exile. He casts Swords to Plowshares targeting Ranger Captain of Eos. It's exiled and Nick gains 3 life. Mike casts Other Sworn Cannonist. With nothing else, he passes the turn. Nick draws and plays a Beseju who endures as his land for turn. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with everything. Teolani triggers and Nick pays 10 mana into its ability, creating 9 elementals tapped and attacking Mike. Teolani triggers and Nick gets the city's blessing. Unfortunately, Mike left his shields down, and since now the elementals have plus 3 plus 0, vigilance, trample, and double strike, Mike takes it all, dies, and Nick wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what an amazing set of games. We got to see all the decks do what they do best. In Game 1, Ashani resolved a Culling Ritual which cleared the board and gave him the mana he needed to ride that wave all the way to the finish line. In Game 2, Peter was doing what Kirk does best, which was win explosively fast. It was so quick that the other players did not even get to see a turn 2. In Game 3, Nick was able to snatch the win from Mike with an overwhelming force of elementals. Nick showed tonight who the real aggro stacks is at the CEDH table. The most valuable card in tonight's game, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Teolani Summoner. This unassuming card is a powerhouse in Jetmir. It's niche enough that people don't pay attention to it until it's too late. Nick kept his head low, and with this card, Mike didn't realize its power until it was too late. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time and we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.